how's it going? Today I uh, figured we'd take a look back at this economy three and a half horse hit and miss engine that I did a video on a little while ago. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. I'll put a card up in that corner for you. But uh, just as a quick backstory, I got this off a guy who posted it on our local um, club Facebook group. He was looking for it to go to a good home. Um, so I reached out to him. I said, hey, what do you want for the engine? Uh, the picture showed it like all on its side in the dirt on a cart or something. I don't remember. It was on like a little dolly on its side. Um, and he's like, I just want to see it go to a good home and get put back, you know, brought back to life and whatnot. How's 20 bucks sound? So, uh, next thing you know, my truck was in his yard and I was loading this thing up. <laughs> um, and like I said, it, it, it was laying on its side out in the weather for I don't know how long. It was all busted and cracked up and whatnot. And I later found that the last time that it had run was 1985. Um, and it was the guy's grandfather's. But anyways, in that video, we took it all apart and fixed all the stuff that was broken um freed everything up because it was all seized up and whatnot we actually got it to fire off and run um however i had not fixed any of the cracks or done any of the valve work or anything that it needed yet so i didn't run it for very long and i was also running it off a very homemade ignition system no oil or no grease cups all that kind of fun stuff so i figured it's time for an update here seeing as though it's been a little while and i've done some work to this thing so right off the bat you can see there's a couple things that have changed here um, one i went ahead and stole the mag off my witty and i threw it on here and then for the witty i took the mag off my fuller and johnson and put it on there because while this thing had a mag on it um, the points are still so ridiculously seized in there i'm not entirely sure how i'm going to go about getting them out or freed up so i don't even know if the coils are good yet so I haven't quite gotten to that yet, but um, I really want to show this engine this summer at the Power Association show, so I figured the Fuller and Johnson could take a little break. So we got, went ahead and got a uh, working mag on there. Um, the other thing I stole off that engine were these grease cups, minus that one, I stole these off. Um, it already, the engine still had this one, and on these two spots it had like these little like uh, grease gun fittings, but they were for a really, really old style grease gun that I don't have. So I uh, went ahead and replaced those with these uh, grease cups. Again, I will eventually get uh, a fresh set for this engine. Put those back on the Fuller and Johnson. But seeing as though this is the one that's been shown a lot this year, um, I figured we'd run with those. I uh, went ahead and adjusted the governor a little bit to get it to slow down just a touch. Um, also cleaned out, well I actually didn't clean out the gas tank. I just fixed the plumbing on the gas tank there. And uh, I took a peek in there and it looked fairly clean. So I ran some gas through and it came out clean and we've been running it ever since and it's been fine. And then I went ahead and got an oiler for it. And then the biggest things that I've done since are, if you'll remember, this head was busted in a bazillion different places. So I took this over to my buddy Jake's place. He's also known as Five Tractor Guy here on YouTube. And uh, together, well mostly him, but together, <laughs> we went ahead and brazed this head back together. And you can see it's, it's starting to rust up here a little bit because I've left it out in the elements a couple times by accident. But there's a big old blobbing braze going all the way across here, down and across this head bolt here. It's there. We came all the way down here, across here, all the way back to here. And we came down and across this head bolt too, down almost to this water shut off. And then back up around here and then also across and through there and over here. That's how busted up this head was. So somebody definitely left water in this thing and it froze and it really blew this thing apart. I was gonna have him help me fix this one. Uh, however, we did not have time this, uh, between my school schedule and uh, his work schedule. We didn't have time to do that. So unfortunately, this is still cracked. Luckily enough, it will hold water up to about here which covers the cylinder and this thing runs so cool you don't even really need to fill this hopper. Um, I do plan on brazing this back together at some point, probably next year, just because it will look prettier. But um, yeah, went ahead and left that all exposed as like a battle scar because I think that stuff's pretty neat. Uh, a lot of people will see that and kind of run away from an engine where I'll look at it and say, wow, that's cool. Some, somebody actually put the work into fixing that at some point. Um, and then the other big thing that I went ahead and did was after we did this, I was all excited. I threw the engine all back together, filled it with water, and I tried running it, and it was just puffing out steam and water and smoke, and there was water pouring out from these valves and whatnot. So I took it all apart again, and I realized that these valve guides were actually cracked on the inside too. So I brought it down to my buddy, 
who actually hooked me up with the intake valve, uh, Tony down at Wine Dance Machine Company, and he hooked me up and he put valve guides in both valves here. You can see he bored it out and pressed the valve guide in. I want to say it's a small block Chevy valve guide, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, he did both. There's one on the exhaust valve there too. I'll see if I can throw some pictures in here too so you guys can actually see it. Um, and then he also went ahead and ground the valve seats and, the, and cut the valves. So all I had to do was lap them in a little bit. And boy, do these things seal nice now. I don't know if you guys remember in the first video, but these valves were all over the place. They would move around like this much. And the, as a result, the thing, although I cut the valves and, I mean, cut the seats and lapped the valves in and everything, they just would not seat right. And they would puff back out the intake and I had very little compression. Now that they're not moving around like crazy, we actually were able to cut the seats and the valves and whatnot, and now they really seal nice. So this thing's got a ton of compression now, and it just starts and runs so nice now. So uh, I just figured I'd do a little update here. So that's all I've done to it so far. You can see I've got some antifreeze and water in there because I had this up with school at me, or up at school with me since mid-March. So I put some antifreeze in there so I could leave the water in there and not have to worry about it freezing when it got cold because I go to school in Massachusetts, and then since then it hasn't boiled it off, so I haven't replaced it. But anyways, without further ado, I figure I'll set the camera up on something here because I have no idea where my tripod got off to. I'm still unpacking from school. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how nicely this thing runs now. So let me find something to prop the camera up on, and uh, we'll go ahead and fire this thing up. All righty, guys. Got the camera propped up on my little stool here. Hopefully it doesn't roll down the driveway. But um, anyways... Uh, Go ahead and start by oiling everything up here. I'm gonna put a little bit on the intake valve, a little bit on the exhaust there. Got an oil spot on the rocker. I usually put a little bit here. Uh, there's a spot here, a spot there for the mag, there for the governor. Put a little bit on the uh, cam gears and on the uh, follower. And there are also two spots on the governor for the weights. So go ahead and work those in. Put the speed to full. And turn our oiler on. Crank these grease cups down quick. We should be good to go. We'll flip the timing lever up. Normally, once we choke around here, pull a little gas in. Looks like we already got prime there, dripping out. And uh, let's see what happens. Well, it does every time. That's as it should be, folks. <clears throat> Just one pull and it's off. <clears throat> So, if you guys have seen the last video fairly recently, you'll realize that this thing sounds a hell of a lot more strong now. It's got a real crack out the exhaust like it should instead of all the compression just leaking out the valves and more of like a little poof. But this is its new max speed. Originally, the max speed was more like this. So I adjusted the governor a little bit so that it's a little bit slower. I mean, this is definitely still a pretty decent speed here. Like if I ever wanted to belt it up to something or whatnot. See that governor is really spinning down there. We can go ahead and slow her down to the next setting here. It's a little bit more tame. <clears throat> setting. <clears throat> this is a nice slow running speed here. Ooh. Might be out of gas. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> it's been a while since I filled that tank. Let me go make sure it's got gas in it and we can show you the slower speed. Turns out the mag wire just popped out there. The mag really needs a new lead out tower so sometimes that happens. But anyways, 
as I was saying, this is a pretty nice running show speed here. Definitely a hell of a lot more tame. I've got it to run slower than this, but not very reliably. I think about the slowest I can go is about there. <clears throat> I don't know if it's gonna keep running when it's this cold. Usually it needs to warm up a little bit, but we'll see. But it's definitely a much nicer show speed. And also this way it won't use any gas. <clears throat> But yeah, I've learned that this thing is somewhere between five and 600 pounds. So it's definitely a pretty large chunk of iron. And those wheels definitely have a hell of a lot of mass to them. So it can definitely run pretty slow like this. <clears throat> but yeah, it's just a super, super happy engine now. And uh, I'm very, very happy with how it came out. So the next steps for it are gonna be fixing that crack there on the hopper, but probably first I gotta get it up on a cart because dragging it around on these skids gets real old real fast. Uh, even the winch in the truck doesn't particularly care for it. It makes it a pain to move around at all, so definitely gotta get it up on a nice cart. And then I think I'm gonna end up hanging on to this one, at least for the a little while here, because even though I bought it with the intention of probably flipping it, I've kind of fallen in love with it, especially seeing as how much work I put into getting it going again. And it just runs so nice. So I'm probably gonna hang on to it for a little while. I think I might try and get, be able to keep it out at the uh, Long Island Antique Power Association in our barn. Hopefully when we finish construction, I can get a little bit of room out there. Because right now, I don't have any room for it, which is why it's sitting out front in my driveway here, <laughs> in front of the garage. Granted, it's a nice talking piece for when customers come pick up their machines, but I don't think the parents particularly care for it being where their flowers normally go. But, <laughs> oh well. But yeah, it's a super, super happy engine. I'm very happy with how it came out. <clears throat> and it just goes to show, this is kind of my mentality, is that most people probably looked at this thing and made it yard art or maybe parted it out and sold it. I really don't see the need to do that. If you're willing to put a little bit of work into it, you can save any of these engines. This one was pretty damn rough. I'm gonna speed that up a little bit there. This one was pretty damn rough. And now it's back and running again like it's brand new. So with a little bit of time and, and money and effort, honestly not even that much money. I think the valve guides, uh, that was less than a hundred bucks. And then once I get, the oiler was free. Once I get grease cups for it and I fix the mag, I'm looking at maybe, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks total. So, I don't know, I'm kind of of the belief that if you should do everything you can to save them. There's, there are very, very few engines that I would ever deem as uh, like yard art territory or worthy of that. Um, so, again, if me at 20 years old is able to fix this thing with a little bit of help and you know money that I'm able to make only working during the summer, I think that most of the older guys that are into this hobby and that have the money and the time to do this could definitely save a lot more engines. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, it's just a happy, very nice running engine. <clears throat> I'm sure the neighbors love it too because it does echo off the hills down here. <laughs> <clears throat> Go ahead and rev it up again. <clears throat> Just takes right off. This is officially my biggest flywheel engine at this point too, by the way. It very much dwarfs the Witty, which is over there right now. Cause this thing just sitting on four by fours is about as big as that engine on its cart. <laughs> and it weighs several hundred pounds more, so. 
it's pretty cool to have something that's a little larger. I do like these bigger engines like this. I just don't necessarily have the room for them. But hopefully one day I can get some really big ones and make this one look small. But anyways, go ahead and shut her down here. I usually just hold the, uh, the latch in like this, let it coast down slowly. That way I don't have to mess with the gas next time because I know where it's happy now. So just leave that put and then just go and start it. <clears throat> One other fun thing you can do with this engine is you can usually back hit it and get it to start up that way too. Which, for those of you guys that don't know what that is, that's usually what you do with the really large flywheel engines, where you'll prime it, and then you'll spin it backwards um, real quick, and you'll build up compression, and then it will trip the mag, which will fire it and cause it to kick back, and then go through the first compression cycle, and then it will fire up and take off. I haven't had an engine that I can ever really do this with, so to have one is kind of neat. A lot of people will say it's kind of not great for the engines, it puts a lot of force on things, which it definitely does. So I don't do it super often, but I also know for a fact that it's set, that's how you're supposed to start some of the larger engines. So for those, it's probably all right. These smaller ones, not something I would do every time, especially given how easy this one starts up, but it is kind of fun to show people. And that's pretty much how you do it. Just kind of a fun little party trick. But yeah, anyways, just wanted to show you guys that. Go ahead and shut it down for real here. But um, anyways, guys, like I said, just wanted to shoot this quick little update, show you guys what I've been up to with this engine and how it ended up coming out. Um, I'm sure that you'll see it in the uh, Long Island Antique Power Association Summer Show video, which for anybody who's interested, um, we're out in Riverhead, which is on Long Island, it's about half an hour from the Orient Point Ferry. So if you're in Connecticut and you can get down to New London, you take the ferry across or half an hour down the road. But anyways, that show is on July 8th and 9th. So anybody who's local or willing to make the trip out should definitely do it. And then we can, I'll be able to see you there. But uh, anyways, um, like I said, just wanted to shoot an update. You'll see this one again in the future. And with that, I think we'll conclude this video. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked what you see, hit the little like and subscribe buttons. I'd appreciate that. By all means, leave a comment if you have one. And I'll see you in the next one. Back home for the summer, so there'll be plenty of videos to come soon.